These are two almost identical R2 style droids, but they're built completely differently. I'm so confused. One is made from 3D printed parts and the other a fully aluminum powder coated beast weighing over 200 pounds. I met the incredible makers behind both and got the full story behind how these droids came to life. These droids are amazing. Um, I don't even know which way to turn my head. <laughs> People that know me know I'm going to look down the barrel of the lens here that I've been toying with building an R2 unit for a lot of years. And every time I see people's R2 units, I want to take it home with me. <laughs> and so, uh, and so, yeah, I just like jealous in a good way that the fact that you have these and super excited to ask you about kind of the process. So let's start with this one because the exciting thing for me is the transparent head. Tell me a little bit about what kind of inspired you for this. So what inspired me for this was actually my son uh, built a droid, um, an R3 droid with a clear dome like this at Galaxy's Edge. Right. Okay. Um, that yeah, was yeah. the that was the initial inspiration for this droid, um, and he built the little small scale droid um, along the same time that we were getting into the droid building, you know, hobby. Right. And so I thought, well, wouldn't it be great if we could replicate the little droid he built at uh, Galaxy's Edge? life size right and so i started researching and just started building and just kind of um you know i like to say this droid just kind of happened right. um i started i was learning 3d printing right um and i was just printing things that were just sort of you know in, inconsequential right then i thought well why why am i printing in, inconsequential things when i could be printing things that result in some you know object right so, right so yeah. I, I i i got the files to print the um the legs started there so these are some of the the first prints i ever i ever these made ones here on the legs. right yeah, yeah, either yeah. the legs are 3d printed right um even everything down to the gears and motors and well the motors not but the gears and the uh oh, right, the, yeah, the, for all the drive system yep wow um so um that's where the inspiration came from me learning 3d printing my son inspired me with the, the clear dome droid at, at galaxy's edge and yeah yeah, the next thing you know, we're here. And these are these valves in here, old yeah. valves. Those are actually so those are vacuum tubes. They are not actually glowing. So those are those are made to look like right. actual vacuum tubes, but they're um, they're I just don't LED think vacuum lit. tubes would survive. Right, right. they would just would catch on fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the whole thing. I mean, it would look cool, but right, in a bad right. way. But it would be fire, you know, and we'd have <laughs> we'd have to have the fire department here. I really like that though. That's kind of yeah, that's thanks. a cool vibe. So that yeah. came from my dad. He repairs old radios, um, or you know, it's one of his hobbies. I got my my love of hobbies from my dad. Right. Um, but he had those sitting around in the shop, and I was like, man, it would be great if I used those in here. So he gave me a couple that didn't work. And I and I made them into prop there for this one was done by um, by a, a, a builder that builds it actually the same one that did the aluminum down there. Right. right. Um, but this one is sort of uh, special. It's sort of hard to come by because of the number of failures he was having when he was vacuum forming these. Yeah. Um, it's not easy. No, it's not. There was a lot of there was a lot of failures for every one dome that he had that was sellable. Yeah. Um, to the club, he had multiple, multiple fa failures, and it just wasn't worth his time right. to keep doing it. So yeah. this is a really hard to come by piece. Of the clarity of this is fantastic, right? Because that's the bubbles, challenge. You get yeah right. bubbles, or it's not clear, or right. you get like a lensing effect. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so so the fact that I have a nice clear dome here is pretty remarkable. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. It's wonderful. Yeah. This we lovingly call R two A one because he is almost all aluminum. So A1 looks like Al, wow. and um, but yeah, so he is mostly machined parts that we've bought off the club website, and it's more of, I hate to say it just fits together because nothing's quite that easy, but um, <laughs> I think after he did his and I wanted one of my own, I used my little bit of um, fancy high maintenance self that I wanted the nicest that they so that's, that's, fair. that's <laughs> fair. and he was fine as long as I was um, approving the purchases then all of this sounds very familiar yes. all of it sounds very familiar to me yeah I get I get where you're coming yeah, from yeah so he said yeah. well if you'll approve the purchase of the aluminum then we'll go aluminum so he has an aluminum um, his body skins legs feet head everything you see on him is aluminum the thing that is hard to convey if you're looking at this on video is anything that's metal when, when i saw this before i was like can i touch this and you feel that that powder coating metal and it's like what the freak is going yeah. on <laughs> it's just it's just incredible and it how much does it weigh have you weighed it uh 
he's it, lifted it. Yeah, I, I lift it every time we load it up. So I will tell you, it is, it's probably on the order of 200, 215, 20 pounds, something around that. Wow. Wow. So do you need to like... in stone, I'm sorry. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm just thinking when I hit stone, I'm thinking of all the Christmas food I ate. Uh, but yeah, totally. And this is great. I mean, the fact you can see... The beautiful thing about something that's that it's out of metal is you can see the machine marks right, exactly. and it gives that, you look at it and you're like, this is made of metal. Right. All that effort that you have to go into to, you know, make something that's a 3D print look like metal. Right. It's a it's a different thing, but yeah, crazy to me. And it's really interesting to take this to a powder coater and ask them to I powder bet. coat. What do they say? Um, most people get real excited. I mean, <laughs> I will say because they can honestly say they've never powder coated a droid before. So, but there's a lot of intricate parts because that's above our pay grade. We do yeah. not know how to powder coat, and so there's a lot of places that have to be taped and to and the how they hang the pieces to right. make sure they're done right. So the um, local shop that did this said had a great time, but we're not doing another one. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the remote control. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're running. Um, so these are, if you look, these are PlayStation 3 um, yeah. navigation controllers. So this is, again, this is not something that we developed. Um, this, is, this is something that a, uh, a club member developed. Um, and it's a, it's a system called Shadow. It's an Arduino-based system. Right. Um, that uh, runs a sketch that interacts with these uh, these controllers via Bluetooth. So there's a Bluetooth shield over the okay. over the um, Arduino Mega. Right. Um, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a USB shield that has a Bluetooth dongle that interacts with the with the wands. Okay. And the sketch it runs um, triggers sounds, um, triggers movement, head controls, um, any of the sounds um, with different gestures and different right. co different combinations, and also you know of course foot drives and turn. Right. Um, so it's 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 a, a, a it's customizable uh -huh. um, to the point that we customize that droid to run a different sound system than this one. Right. Um, that's a little more complex. That droid actually runs a system that uses an AI generated. Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, vocalization method. Oh. So it, it it uses a vocalization method that never creates two sounds that are the same. That's cool. So this one you might notice after I've played the loop a few times, you, you might notice right. that he come around to the same sound right. again. It's on a set of different sounds. Right. There's yeah. a certain set of MP3s. That one, um, you may never hear the same sound twice. That's really so, cool. Um, but, that, but that one's the similar, a similar system, but it's very yeah. customizable, very um, very easy to use, and it's, it's pretty common. And my understanding, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but when you go to the parks and you see the R2 units, they're using the same, or at least a very similar system to this. Those are so this is Bluetooth based, which is not great for interference. So um, they're using an RF. They're using an RC. Yeah. RC. RC. Yeah. Okay. RC. Yeah. Um, but they might have more uh, something discreet like this. Yeah. So the thing we like about these is that they're very discreet, so you can add to the magic. Yeah. You might can you keep can your hands by the side, the right, hand. or behind your side, or in your in your jacket pocket, and yeah. the fans really can't tell who's controlling the droid. Yeah. It's so, fantastic. Yeah, so it's something similar to what you might see. I'm not really 100% sure how they do the the droids in the parks, but I suspect it's something very similar. Yeah, yeah. 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 We've also yeah. had to learn the electronics and yeah. the coding. Yeah. I mean, so you start off like, I just want a basic droid, and then they're never done. Right. Because you keep on saying, but ooh, let's just do one more thing, yeah. or let's just yeah. add this one thing. So I can only imagine. That's what it's like with my proton pack. So yeah. I can't imagine right. what it's like with a droid. Yeah, very similar. Yeah. Sure, yeah, I'm always like, okay, I'm gonna add a smoker. All right, yeah. I'm gonna add a this. Yeah, yeah. because someone whose droid was blowing bubbles yesterday. Yeah. Yep, it's, it's, that's it's, amazing. It blows <laughs> bubbles and it will dispense trading cards. So. Okay, I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's pretty awesome. Both of these have such merit, like for the different. I just, I love it. You guys should be super proud of what you've done. And we are. Uh, we are. We enjoy yeah, it. I love it. The best part about it all, though, is when you have a fan come by and they interact with the droid, and it's real to them. And all of a sudden, their you know screen experience becomes a real life experience. Yeah. And it's just you know it gives you chill bumps to see the uh, interaction, yeah. especially the kids. But, I, I, I couldn't agree, agree more. A, a, anything that you build that then creates an experience for someone else exactly. and you see them in that experience, I always say, that's, that's the paycheck. That's the paycheck. That's the paycheck exactly. right there. Yeah. So yeah, I couldn't agree more. And guys, thanks again. Absolutely. Amazing. Congratulations. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Like
And if you're into amazing builds like this, I also make stuff right here on this channel. Props, cosplay gear, and all kinds of fandom-inspired builds. Plus, we even visit real filming locations from movies and TV shows. So if that's your thing, hit the subscribe button and come geek out with me.